Yo, have you noticed something? The gap between the rich and the poor is getting bigger and bigger as time passes. But why? A common belief is that it's for the good for all of us. If a small group of people earn an enormous amount of money, money is sucked up from all of us into the pockets of a small group of people. How does this happen? One reason is probably because of the way money is created. Right now, all of the money that is in our economy is created by the banks, especially when they make loans. Now, most people assume that when banks make loans, they're lending out someone else's savings. But to be honest with you, that's not the case. They're printing it out of thin air. That's how they make their money. They use a certain system that I'm going to reveal to you along this video. Let's say you deposit $100 in the bank. They can print a thousand without a bank loan and create new money electronically by typing numbers into their accounts. If people take out loans from the banks. The more loans people make debt and the more debt there is, the more money there is. The shocking fact is that if nobody went into debt, there would be almost no money in the economy. Our economy depends on electronic money created by banks but because the money is created when people borrow someone else's money somewhere else, someone somewhere else has to pay interest on every pound created. I honestly find this very fascinating because this is a very genius strategy because instead of having slaves that you can whip, you can have slaves you can dangle this printed money in front of. You don't teach them about money, obviously, because if they know about money, they would tell you off. In effect, we are renting the money we need to run our economy from the banks. This means that the United States alone pays approximately $192 million in interest every single day. $92 million in interest is being paid so that they create fake money. This reminds me of something that Henry Ford said, there would be a revolution tomorrow don't know what the banking system is up to because everybody is asleep. Everybody is blind. And this just gets a hell a lot more interesting. August 15th, 1971. This was just meant to be another chill day for Americans. What they didn't expect is that this would be the date that their money would become worthless and this would lead to the complete overhaul of the financial system. Directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets and controls 95% of the world's GDP and the year was 1971. Perhaps the most pivotal year in the recent history that you've never even heard of. And now you might be asking what exactly happened that year. In the most mild words I can use, inflation soared, real wages were crippled. What does it need to master the future? You see it, the world took quite a turn in 1971. I mean clearly, wages started to decline drastically and things that were previously correlated completely lost correlation overnight and that my friend was just the tip of the iceberg. There were far more profound structural changes happening in the background. Something very very carefully planned and very shady, very evil was supposed to happen in the year 1971. That was the year money officially became worthless and of course yeah, you might say your money still has value to this day and you might be particularly right. But the question is, why does it have value? You see, simply put, it's just because you believe it does and that's the blessing and the curse of fiat currency. It works as long as everyone believes it works. I mean, it sounds almost religious and all of that began in 1971. You see, prior to 1971, the government had to hold a certain amount of gold every dollar printed. You see, the dollar was backed by gold. 
you could redeem one ounce of gold with $35 and this ensured inflation was steady and made it so that money actually held value because always exchange it back for gold. The problem with this is it was extremely hard for the Fed to print more money, especially when they had to put one ounce of gold as collateral every $35 they print. I mean, it would be much easier for them if they could simply just print money out of thin air. That's just the easiest option. And unsurprisingly, that is exactly what they did. Still do till this day. And that was the big event that took place in 1971. President Noxon severed ties between the dollar and its golden base, meaning that the dollar was no longer convertible to gold and that everything that has led to the obscene devaluation of the American dollar ever since, that led me to an inevitable question. Why would the government tarnish their own currency's value by taking it off the gold standard? And the answer became apparent to me very quickly. As always, it's all about control. You see, at the time the US dollar was packed to gold, every other major currency was pegged to the dollar. So when the England and the France threatened to redeem their gold, the Fed was in trouble and given their limited gold reserves at the time. And simultaneously, the US was fencing a recession, was struggling to stimulate the economy because of the government's monetary policy. Because at the time it was really just limited by the amount of money they had. So the Fed needed a way out. They needed to boost their domestic economy to make sure the US remained the world's reserve currency. So they decided to go off the gold standard and that meant that the government could now print unlimited money whenever they pleased to stimulate the economy and still keep their status as global reserve currency. Now this whole ordeal eased their international pressure and at least it allowed the government to gain more control over the people because money essentially became debt and that was secured by nothing except from your own trust in the government and that trust was something that they could abuse for their own gain. So with an unbacked currency there was no limit to how much money the government could print, no limit on how much debt they could take. 